All right. Good evening. Saints of God. All right. Now that you've been Vivianized, you're ready to go. Before we start, uh, this lady here needs uh, phone deliverance and prayer, but she only speaks Spanish. You know anybody that could call this gal? Could you call her? Okay. I'll, I'll talk to you about it later, okay? Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the teaching tonight. God bless you to YouTubers. God bless you tonight. Uh, the Spirit Word is our next seminar. That's part three. That will be the last part. That will be at the end of the month on May 26th. Okay? And uh, please remember that I'm on the radio every day, Monday through Friday, in the mornings and in the afternoon on these two stations. I am always on the radio on the internet on soundcloud.com slash hardcore dash Christianity. If you'd like to help us uh, pay some of the bills around here, and we need some bills paid where we have this building next to us in escrow. And I'm going to kind of turn it into a temporary hotel because literally every week now we get people visiting from out of state. And some of them don't have any money. They can get here financially, you know, by bus, plane, or train, or whatever. But once they get here, they can't, they can't make it. So I wanted to have a place set aside to help people that don't have the money to get hotels. So we're going to fix that little uh, join up next door there so they can stay a few days and properly finish their deliverance. All you have to do is switch over to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, and they'll pay us every time you surf the web. Uh, tonight's teaching is on our House of Healing AZ channel number two. Thursday nights is all in live stream. It is not on the YouTube channel. Thursday nights on live stream. Fridays is on YouTube. We had over a thousand people watch the last teaching on YouTube. So we're starting to climb it up there. We're grateful for that. A lot of people are sending us emails saying God's healing them and delivering them. It's been wonderful. Remember on the Deliverance Training Channel, which is number one on the list, if you want to get in the healing and deliverance ministry, you go through those 18 sessions, you'll, be, you'll have all the basics you need to start. And then what I want you to do, YouTubers, is open up a terror cell in your church, and you set up, this, it's set up like this. There's two or three people, set up a secret terror cell in your church, and then you start picking off sick people. You peel them off one at a time. You take them to your location, wherever that is, work it out. And then once they get healed, they'll tell somebody else about it. Then somebody else, as soon as they hear about it, they'll refer somebody. And pretty soon you'll have people lined up out the hall to get into your terror cell to get healed. It grows very quickly. It grows so fast that you'll get caught soon. And then you'll get thrown out of your church. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Remember, that's, that's a promotion issue, not a negative. That's what happened to me. I got tossed out, and then we opened up the house of healing. So God always has something better for you when the devil gives you the boot. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Thank you for your donations. We've got some legitimate bills to pay around here now. And... Uh, one of the things we do not pay off around here are payments on limousines and uh, mansions. We sold all those. <laughs> no, we do not whore ourselves out here. Homie don't whore is our next, that's our next t-shirt. Is Nicole here? <laughs> I'm going to get another t-shirt. Homie don't whore. So thank you for your donations. I don't even take a salary here. That's how pitiful this is. It's all volunteer work, but I'm going to get a big salary in glory. Amen. 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 You get the bigger salary you get in glory, by the way, is if you do it and you don't care. See, Father's business is helping others, not racking up stuff for yourself. Christianity, believe it or not, 
is not a me-oriented profession. And that's shocking. But it really, truly isn't. In its original form, it wasn't about me. No amen. So we got a lot of selfish, self-centered people here tonight. <laughs> All right, YouTubers, I'll talk to some of you. I thought I would take another kind of an odd look at prayer tonight. Maybe take a look at some of the secrets of it, the oddities of praying. Everybody prays, regardless of religion. I thought I would get to the nuts and bolts of it tonight. It's the Greek word prosukomai. It means to supplicate. It doesn't have any other definition than that. So you don't know what kind of prayer it is. You have to look at the context of the text to figure out what's going on. It doesn't tell you how long, what, when, why, who, how, anything. It just means to, 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 to petition, to supplicate, to engage in a spiritual activity. Okay? It's usually translated as prayer in the New Testament. Luke chapter 11. It came to pass as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to prosukomai, to pray, as John taught his disciples. Why'd they say that? Well, Jesus would sneak off and pray by himself. Regular Christians normally don't do that. They pray in groups, like geese. <laughs> But disciples are not Christians. A disciple is an upgrade from a Christian. A disciple develops quiet, personal prayer time when nobody's around. People who don't develop that never become disciples. I can't believe he said that. <clears throat> That's right. Christians have to be motivated to do it. So they need a group, a church, a band, a choir, a video, songs, singing, music. They got to have something to do it. A disciple doesn't. They were watching Jesus, and what they noticed about him was incredible. He would sneak off by himself and spend time praying, and they would watch him from afar. You notice in the four Gospels, there's very little interchanges between Christ and the disciples. You haven't noticed that? He teaches a lot, but there's very little of them talking to him. You haven't noticed that? You ever think about that? The reason for that is they were in awe. Have you, do you know somebody that talks to you like a busted chainsaw? <laughs> do you know somebody that yaps at you like a banny rooster? That person is not in awe of you. I can't believe you said that either. If somebody yaps at you a lot, bop, 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 they are not in awe of you. And in fact, they may not even respect you. What they're doing there is their insecurities are using you as a sounding board. <laughs> I'm lonely, I'm weak, I'm insecure, I'm lost. I, I need somebody to hear me so I can suck the life out of them. Yak, 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 yak. <laughs> the disciples didn't do that with Jesus. They rarely talked to him. They were in awe. They would watch him pray. Then they'd watch him go out, and there's 5,000 fishes and oh, 5,000 loaves. It was unbelievable. Then they'd watch him sneak off again for a sukumite, and they said to him, finally, Lord, we've been watching this pattern for a couple of years now. Teach us to do that. Have you ever met somebody with, with the anointing and you know they have it? People are curious about them. They find them an oddity. There's so few that have it. And they just look at them sometimes. Hmm. 
What's that person thinking? What's that person doing? What's different about that person? Jesus needed no music, no band, no CD player, nothing. He would go out isolated, and they want to know, what the heck's he doing out there? Whatever he's doing, they said, look at these results. Any person who has a private prayer life, other people will see results from that person. Most Christians have no results, and if you tail it back, they have no quiet prayer time alone with God. He would go pray alone. I'll tell you what, if you had Peter, James, and John hanging around you, you'd want to get out alone too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. James and John wanting to burn up a village. Peter babbling all the time like a schizoid. Yeah, you'd want to find a rock and crawl under it, too. Yeah. Luke chapter 11 again. Jesus said, when you pray, lego, interesting word. Oh, oh, that's to speak out loud. Isn't that interesting? It wasn't. See, I'm praying right now. I'm praying that you're listening to the Bible study. <laughs> I'm not praying, though, like this, am I? I'm, thank you. Yeah. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hagiadzo. This is one of the few, few cases in the Bible where the English, old English term is better than all the other terms. I like that word, hallowed. I don't know why I like it. It sounds awesome. That's what it sounds like. I just made that up. Hagiazo is the word for sanctification. And sanctification is setting aside or setting yourself apart for God. Here's the group. You're here. You're Hagiat. You're sanctified or set apart for God. Don't you see it? Christians are all in the group. The disciples set aside themselves to pray alone with God. Jesus was sanctifying himself over there by himself. Hallowed, sanctified is your name. Right? Phase one, come in with some praise. Phase two, pray for God's will. In narcissistic America, that's the hardest thing in the world. That's the hardest, that's the biggest plague Christians have here in America. The me syndrome. It's all about me. You do marriage counseling? I do. What's the number one problem in marriages? Me. It's always a me issue. They did that. I did that. You did this. He said that. What, what about me? Paul was the opposite. He said, it's not about me. It's time for me to die. In fact, I die daily, he said. What was he saying there? I have to get rid of me every stinking day of my life. What was Jesus doing out there? What did he say, Luke 11? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. That's the Greek word what? Aphiomi, it means to release us from them. Okay? When you're washing the blood of Christ, you are released of your sins, so when you die, you do not carry your sins into eternity. You leave here sinless in the eyes of God. If you look around the room, there's not very many people that look sinless, but believe it or not, looks are deceiving. <laughs> That's right. That's a fact. That's the truth. 
That's about 90% of what I teach is facts and truth. The other 10% I'm taking a swing at. <laughs> Listen, you need to be released of your sins. Yes, sir. You want them released. You want them out. You want them gone. You want them off of you. Yes, sir. They're kind of Velcro balls. You want them gone. That's forgiveness. When you forgive someone else, same Greek word, you release them for what they did to you. You release it out of you. It's called inner healing. It releases out of you. Sometimes it's supernatural. Sometimes somebody wounds you or degrades you or hurts you in the womb and you don't even know it. Later on in life, a curse fell upon you and later on you must release that curse from your womb, your mother's womb. Sounds weird. Sounds like science fiction. It really isn't. It's really true. You can curse a baby in the womb. Baby is born. The curse follows the baby. <clears throat> you might have to have it out with mother. Yep. She was a 15 unwanted pregnancy. Rape pregnancy. Forced sex pregnancy. Economic burden pregnancy. Thought about abortion, didn't do it. That baby's cursed. Right? I didn't want the baby. I don't want Well, you might have to have it out with your mother. In fact, tonight's a good night to do it. Let's have it out with your mother. Well, she's dead. Let's release her anyway so you can get that curse off you from the womb. The Holy Ghost will remove it. Afiami means to release, to let it go. Release it. In addition to that, he said, by the way, people that are indebted to us, we're going to release those too. I mowed your lawn five times this last year. You didn't mow my lawn once. Ah, oh, it's okay. Go ahead. I just released them from my lawn. In Sun City, everybody's got a landscaper. You know what? I live in Sun County with old people. I like it there because although I'm old, there I appear young. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm a teenager. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You ever go to the gym and work out with a couple guys at 80 years old? Never? Never? Don't do it. Don't do it. The shower part is, is not a pretty sight. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Stuff is dripping and dropping. Old people in Sun City all have landscapers. Well, last month, everybody in town's mad. We're all mad. It rained so much a month or so ago. Uh, weeds here in Arizona or in the valley area grow like crazy when it rains too much. You know, like every five years we get a pretty good chunk of rain here. And weeds are everywhere. They're all over the place. Well, they sprout out in Sun City like crazy. Well, the landscapers up there, they're used to a normal workload all over town. But when that happens, they're swamped. Swamped. And our landscaper, <coughs> along with everybody else's, didn't clump, come for two months. <coughs> That's right. That's right. I'm going to have a piece of somebody's mind. We had leaves all over and weeds everywhere. You wouldn't have believed it. Fear went through my body one morning <laughs> as my wife comes stumbling out of the bedroom. Yep. She looked, I saw her looking outside. Then she looked over at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been a counselor for 35 years. I'm an expert on body language. <laughs> I bolted out the garage door so fast. I know what she was thinking. He's not, he's not that old. He could get some of those weeds up. <laughs> See? That's how you interpret wives. That's how you don't know. Them. You rookies. Professional. <laughs> 
the landscaper comes this morning. He says, oh, I'm so sorry. This, that. I say, hey, I know. Hey, lots of rain. Don't worry about it. What was I doing there? Luke 11. I just, I just released it. Hey, I understand that. Rain, weeds. Hey, I ran out the door too. <laughs> That's right. Just release the debt. Just release what you think you're owed, narcissistic Christian. Lead us as Pharaoh. Oh, interesting word. No, it's not lead us. It's see when you're carrying somebody, you're doing both jobs. If you're just leading them, you're only doing one. Into what? Parasmos. Testing. Testing. Deliver us from ponderous perversion. What is perversion? Anything that's me. In Christianity, it's all about thy will be done. If it's me, it's a pervert. Me is a perversion of God's holy will. This is nasty. Jesus, as far from perversion as you can get, said, Father, not my will, thine be done. Then he says, let me illustrate this for you. Which of you has a friend? What's a philos? A friend, somebody you're fond of, some, not a stranger, somebody you've got a, a bond to, somebody you like, somebody likes you, you know, friend, friend, real friend, real friend. Not an acquaintance. If you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and you say, friend, uh, lead me, lend me three loaves. I got a friend of mine coming. I don't have anything to feed him, he says. And then his friend, okay, <clears throat> you got several different layers of friends in life. Some of them are friends, good friends. Some of them are best friends. Some of them are fair weather friends. Some of them are verbal friends. You know how you can tell a verbal friend? They always go overboard on it. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, I'll, I'll help you, no question. Oh, I love helping you. Oh, I'll be there for you. I'll be, as long as you, if you get a lot of rhetoric from somebody about how they're your friend, don't call them. <laughs> That's a trick of the devil. He's setting you up for a disappointment. He's trying to suck you into believing that line. That's a line. He says, the friend, Philos, all of a sudden has problems with their friendship. Why? They're like American Christians. It's the me generation here. Don't trouble me. My door shut. My children are in bed with me. What does that mean? Well, that's a common thing back then, isn't it? Yeah, everybody usually slept in the same bedroom. And it was common for their children to sleep with the parents. Very common. I can't get up. Well, he couldn't get up because everybody in the room was laying around. He's laying around. They're laying around. The place is out. And I say to you, Jesus said, he will not get up because he's your friend. <laughs> wow, what a, what a bombshell revelation that was. I wish I would have had that when I was in my 20s. I had a lot of friendships go south on me that would have never gone south. Had I had these truths, friends only go so far. That's what my grandpa said to me. Mike! Mike! 
We need to use that tone of voice. I'm going to kind of freeze. You'd be lucky to count your friends on one hand when you die. That's what Grandpa told me. I had no idea what he was talking about until now. Friends. You don't have any friends. You have one friend that sticks closer than a brother. You ain't got two. Oh, nobody listening. Some of you got egos. Yeah. When you need something from your friend, your ego is going to take a pretty good beating. You don't have any friends. You'd be shocked to know how far a friend won't go for you. Particularly if you're in real trouble. If you're in casual trouble, sometimes they'll balk. How do I know that? I'm reading it right now. She, he goes next door. Hey, listen, I need three loaves. I can't get up. The kids are laying all over the floor. I don't want to get up and wake up the kids. Dude, do it tomorrow. No. He will get up, though, if, an idea, you are shameless, just aggressive, bold, in your face. Asking for it. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I don't want to sound like blasphemy here, but this sounds like blasphemy, but God's the best friend you've got, and that doesn't mean you have all your needs instantly met. Let me talk to these people. <laughs> God loves you unconditionally. He's the best friend you've ever had. You don't get your needs met instantaneously like that all the time, do you, ma'am? No. The heck? No, you don't. Of course you don't. She knows what's going on. You go to the bank and get a loan. You might know the banker. You're not getting money just because they're your friend. You got to go back to the bank and pound your way in, filling out forms, providing credit statements, whittling that thing down. You're not getting any money because they're your friend at the bank. I bank at Wells Fargo. Trust me, they don't have friends. <laughs> God. I'm banking there for like 40 years. I walk in there and they look at me like I'm Ebola. They don't, they don't have any concern about a human being at all. None. None. Jeez. Listen, when it comes to the supernatural miracle world and the moving of the Spirit, friendships don't cut it. You got to push your way in for a miracle from God. Where did you get that information? I just read it. If you just come casually over to a friend, hey, you know, can you, if you wouldn't mind, could you please <laughs> give me a couple loaves? Can you help me? Oh, I can't get out. My kids are asleep. Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't you see what Jesus is teaching us? Don't you see it? You're not going to get something because you're a friend. Friends are a dime a dozen. you got to push your way in, then you'll get it. Yeah. Luke 11, I say to you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. No. What's he doing there? He's amplifying another incredible teaching as he always does, as the king of the teachers. Aiteo is not the Greek word eratao. Eratao means to ask somebody a question. What time you got? No, that's a tattoo, sorry. What time you got? <laughs> I looked, at, looked like a watch and it was a tattoo. Ooh. That's me asking, what, where's, uh, where's fries? 
uh, what time is it? That's me asking you a question. What's your name? What's your kid's name? That's an information and gathering question. Or a tao. No, no. This is a different word. Aiteo means to ask for something you expect to get because you already told you could have it. Mm -hmm. This little girl knows all about that. Who's that? That your mom? Huh? If that mom tells that girl she can have something when she comes to get it, she expects to get it because mother had already verbally coughed it up. That is I tail. She expects to get it. He never told me he'd give me the time. It's optional. Well, that's, he can. It's a tattoo. But if you had a watch, <laughs> and you don't, you're not legally obligated to give me the, tat, the time or the directions of fries. That's an optional response on your part. I'm asking you a question. No, that is not asking a question. That is not asking for something. Wondering if you're going to get it. Wondering if it's yours, wondering if it belongs to you, wondering if they'll do it, wondering if they're a friend. What? No. You were already told you could have it. You're just asking for what's already yours. Hallelujah. Ask because I already told you could have it. Zateo, eagerly seek it because it's already yours. Knock and kick the door in. There it is for you. Yes, God. But you're not going to get it just because you think I'm your friend. My God. <clears throat> hmm. Listen, when you follow those three steps, eagerly, aggressively searching, asking because you already know it's yours, Knocking because you expect the door to flop open. This part then is easy. Everyone that I tell asks, knowing it's already theirs, gets it. Everyone who eagerly searches for what's already theirs, they find. And it doesn't matter whether they're a friend or not. Another amplification by history's greatest teacher. He says, let me illustrate it this way so you can personalize it. Jesus was a master teacher at personalizing things. Hey, let me illustrate it this way. He goes, is there anybody here in this crowd who's a parent? Oh, a bunch of people raised their hands. Okay. If your son asks you for something to eat, okay, parent, child, love, love. Are there, is there anybody here who is not an abusive parent? Oh, they raise their hand. I'm not. Okay, let me illustrate it for you this way, the Lord said. If your son or daughter asks you for something they need, even a simple thing, a normal thing, a daily needs thing, something to eat, see? Like this girl here. This girl here is not a buffet type person. <laughs> she is very light. <laughs> so when she says to her mother, Mom, can I have something to eat? Her mother doesn't run and get a big bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> she's, she's not going to kill a bucket of Kentucky. Look at her. <laughs> We're looking at two bites of a ham sandwich. No offense, Jews. And that's it over there. <laughs> Will she give her the food? Jesus is asking a duh question. Duh. Of course. Mother would give 
that giant child a, a ham sandwich. Of course she would. Duh, duh, duh. Would 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 she would she go out to the pet shop and get a cotton mouth and bring it or feast and no? He's saying he's not asking real questions here. He's just amplifying his teaching through hypothetical questions. These aren't real questions. He's making an absurdity to illustrate father, daughter. Father, son. Yes. Neighbor who is a friend? No. Father, you. You're the neighbor. Father, you're my friend. Can I have that? No. No, you're not going to get it because we're just friends. Does anybody here yeah. Yeah. actually get everything they want from God instantaneously because they're afraid your hands are? Let me, let me find a couple of liars here. <clears throat> um, okay, no liars tonight. It's odd. Luke 11. Jesus then says, now check this just out. Not, let me continue in the theater of the absurd. He's, he has said absurd things sometimes, not for absurdity reasons, but to illustrate a deep spiritual truth behind it. Look, if you, in comparison to my Heavenly Father, you and Him, you are a pervert. To say the least, comparing me to Jehovah is absurd. An absurdity. Ridiculous. Ridiculousness. If you being perverted, see, Edu, how to give good gifts to your children, you see that easily. You the dad? Yes. D dad has no problem helping her or taking care of her. It's an, almost an unconscious slam dunk. If he and she, compared to God, are perverts, <laughs> And they know how to do that for her, he says. How much more that? How much more will her heavenly father, that's just her dad. That's just her dad. That's not her heavenly, that's not her father. That's her real father. How much more would her real father help her if he would help her in a heartbeat? On top of that, not only that, but you, how much more would he give you? The one and only. Are you going to get it because you're his friend? No. You got to do what? Oh, there it is again. You got to ask for it, knowing you've already been promised it. So you just go in without any doubts or unbelief and you just get it. Come on. So many people want the Holy Ghost and they want this and that and that and this and they don't get it. They don't follow the secrets of prayer. Casual. Too matter of fact. Human beings, human beings, it's part of our fallen nature, like the punk people. That's why I never do that. No, you don't do it overtly. It's called passive aggression. You kind of do it subversively, you know. You ever been married to one of those? I have. <clears throat> I've been married to all types. <clears throat> I have a full range of experience with wives. <laughs> <laughs> I will be signing autographs in the foyer. <laughs> Passive aggressive people. They drive you nuts. You can't even believe it, man. They'll look you right in the face. That didn't bother me. They go back there. Oh, man. It starts going bad for you. Uh huh. Well, oh, there's a guy married to one. Yes, sir. Going back 
write that down. <laughs> All right, Lord, we've lost it here. Now check this out. Let's check this out. Here are some people illustrating long before the birth of Christ what he was talking about. Okay. <clears throat> My dad, bless his heart, he's, he's turning 90 this year. But uh, he had a habit of praying over meals. And he did it when I was little, I think. I think I remember it when I was little, but I, as long as I can remember, I can remember my dad praying over our meals. He wasn't a, a Christian or anything. He just, I think it was a learned behavior, family trait or something, probably from my, his mother or my grandma. But he would say the exact same prayer every time. You ever heard of that? You have? Okay, I, th I figured it was pretty common. He would pray. He learned this prayer, apparently when he was young, and he would pray that same prayer over every meal, every one. We could all recite it. It was the same prayer. I never thought anything of it. In the spirit world, if you want to become a disciple, if you want to amount to anything spiritually, those kind of prayers over lunch and dinner don't work. You can repeat a prayer a thousand times. They don't work. I went to a Lutheran church one time, and I'm like, oh, they hand you a little brochure at the beginning of the service. Flip, flip it open. Okay. There's a schedule on the left side of this brochure of everything that went on in that service. Uh, in, introduction, um, announcements, and they would literally, have you ever seen that? <coughs> it runs down the, literally, and then closing prayer, then the doxology, then it's something this. I mean, literally the whole thing, and then so that the people there who are sitting there are going, uh, I got to know exactly what's happening because I got to get out of here. <laughs> and they watch the list check down. See, and as it gets closer to the bottom, their prayer life increases. Lord, get me, get me out of here. Get me out of here. And I caught myself praying that same prayer. I was looking at the list. Is, he, is this the offertory? What's next? What do we, what do we got? You got to watch her tattoo. Uh, but if you want great things from God, and you want to see your Mickey Mouse Christian life die on the vine, you got to learn that Dinner prayers don't work in the spirit world. Amen. These monster type prayers, they work. These prayers bring huge results, massive anointings, incredible miracles. My dad's dinner prayer is not going to work for you. I'm not going to teach it to you. I mean, the poor guy, he was trying. Luke 18. Jesus spoke a parable to him. Now, a parabola is an illustration that's not true. So if you want a parable, you just make it up. That's what Jesus, he'd make up a story. You would usually use current events and throw it in the story without naming them. He did that several times in the text. Brilliant teaching. Jesus spoke a parable, then, an illustration, and he said, Men ought always to pray and not, a cacao, poop out. Christians can't pray by themselves. More than a few minutes, they poop out. They need a group. They need stimuli. They need somebody around them. They need somebody pushing them. They need somebody.
They're forever struggling. Why? They become weak in prayer. They faint. I remember years ago I went to the Pensacola Revival. And long story short, I brought in a video camera. And I went up in the balcony on Saturday. Saturday was prayer night. And I was sitting down on the lower level in the front. And uh, these people were started praying like freight trains. I'd never seen anything like it. I said, my God, this is unbelievable. So I go up in the balcony, and I go up there and give them my camcorder, and I'm filming this thing, and I didn't realize you were not allowed to <laughs> you weren't allowed to have video in the church. So I was filming away, and I was like awestruck. My gosh, these people are praying. I've never seen anything like it. And then I looked on my corner of my eye here, and there comes security. <laughs> security will always ruin your revival. You ever know? It just takes, this, takes the zip out of it. These people were praying like you wouldn't have believed it. It was, it was really something. Uh, I can't bring that video down to show you because I illegally got it. <laughs> But I'd never seen it like it. It was super power group mass praying. Okay, and there was they had one guy up there was leading the prayers, and then people were following him, and it was flat out awesome. I'd like to develop that someday here at the Deliverance Center. I hope that happens. But all the people were there, and it was very easy for them to pray because they were all in a group. And while you're praying with enthusiasm, it bleeds off on him. Yeah. It bleeds over there. You with me? You're leading by example. <clears throat> You're leading by cooperative example. Each one feeding off one another, almost like army ants. This kind of prayer? No. No, that was group prayer, revival prayer. This is discipleship prayer. This is when you go in alone, and the Holy Ghost is there, and the demons are there, and you're there. There's nobody else there. And normally the demons win. The person does what? They faint. They get pooped. It happens a lot. Has that ever happened to you? This happened to me. I was a guest speaker somewhere several years ago. And uh, the minister of the church took me out to lunch. Real nice guy. Then he said, well, you can, you can go over to my house and rest for a little bit. Okay, well, I'll, yeah, that sounds good. I'll go over there. I'll, I'll pray. He lets me go to his house. I go and use one of the bedrooms. And I kneel down on the bed. And all of a sudden, <laughs> this sense of slumber comes over me. I couldn't believe it. I just suddenly got so pooped. And then I got off my knees. I rolled over into the bed and fell asleep. I got up an hour or so later and I was laying there praying and the thought popped into my head. Man, I just got punked. The devil put me right to sleep and I didn't catch it. And I just rolled over and fainted. Wow. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go pray like crazy. Good, good job. Lord Jesus. <laughs> God Almighty, how did I get? I was fine five minutes ago. It's demonic. It's a spirit of slumber. The demons attack you to put you asleep. That's a fact. God, they don't want you praying. Because if you start praying, they're going to get their faces kicked in. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, dude, don't faint. Man, the answer's on the way. Saying, 
Here's another illustration for you, he says. Let me ex illustrate it this way. Let me use a common thing that you all know about. What? A judge. All these little villages had judges in them. And this judge was what? Yeah, Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> judge Judy doesn't give a rat's fanny what God thinks, and she doesn't care what you think. Period. So Judge Judy's in this town, the Lord said, and there was a widow there. Check this out. And she came to him, and, he, and she says, Avenge me of my Antiticus. Now this is an interesting Greek word because it sounds like she lost a, a lawsuit. And it, was, it sounds like it was unfair. She got screwed in court. Does that ever happen? Does it ever happen? You've got to be kidding. Did you see that movie, The Verdict? Paul Newman says to this gal in the bar, she says, do you think these people are going to get justice? And Paul Newman goes, the, the, the legal system is not set up to give you justice. He said, it's only set up to give you a chance of justice. I never forgot that. I never forgot that. I couldn't believe how true it was. This criminal justice system and civil courts here, they're a farce. An absolute fart. Everybody in the courtroom's a liar. The judge is lying. The lawyers are lying. Everybody lying. It's guilty until proven innocent. Exactly. It's a crapshoot. This you get justice in, in in our justice system. A crapshoot. You don't believe me? OJ. <laughs> what was that girl that killed her daughter and put her in a trash bag and threw her out in the? Casey Anthony. Wow. Check this though. She must have lost the case because that's a legal term used in court. And she says, I got screwed on my lawsuit. I lost the case. You know what was wrong. Do what's right and help me. Well, this judge doesn't care about her. And he would not do it for a chronos season, but afterward, he says, in here, in here. Didn't say it out loud. He's thinking this. He's thinking this inside. I don't care about God or man, but here's what I do care about. This woman, par echo, is constantly in my face. She's right here. God, I don't care about. I don't care about these people, but people in my face, that I care about. <laughs> Thank you, spouses. People don't care about other people. Nobody cares unless they're in your face. Then all of a sudden, hey, I got a problem here. I need to get rid of this person. What do I got to do to get rid of them? He says, I will do what? Ectikeo. I will vindicate her. I will give her justice. What was the Lord saying? Listen. If a, if a stinking, lying, human, perverted judge will give you justice because you're in their face, how much more will the judge of the universe help you in your time of need? Who is not perverted, who does not give false judgment, who is not like this judge. He's comparing the two judges. Why, why is he going to do it? The unjust judge. She's driving him nuts. Popiazzo. She keeps poking him in the eye. <laughs> Have you ever had something in your eye? It drives you nuts. Then if it's really dug in there, you take your top uh, lid and then you pull it down over the bottom. Have you ever done that? Pull it down over the bottom lid? My mom taught me to do that when I was a kid. <coughs> Mom, can you get this thing out of my hand? I'm busy. Pull your lid down on top of the other one. Yeah. <laughs> well, most people call it child abuse. I called it a helpful hint. What happened was, if you pull your top lid down over your bottom lid, your eye starts to water, and you can flush that little critter out of there. See? He... Pulled this lid down. Whoa, I got to get rid of this woman 
poking me in the eye is what that means, hitting me in the eye. I got to get her out of here. <laughs> Don't you get it? Don't you see it? Father is not an unjust judge. Of course he's going to vindicate you. If a stinking sinful judge will do it, how much more will Father stand for you? Because he's a judge? No. Because he's your friend? No. Because you kept pressing your way in. <coughs> Hear what the unjust judge said. We just did. The woman is driving me nuts. I'm going to help her. Eh? Right? Well, won't God do at least that of an unjust judge? Again, these are hypothetical questions. They're obvious questions. Of course he will. Because the judge never chose that woman. He had no interest in her at all. You are eclectus. You are chosen by God. Of course he's going to help you. He chose you. The judge told, chose that woman to get lost. Father chose you to come in. Now you notice the dinner prayer here? No, bo'a'o means to bellow. Lord! See, it's not a dinner prayer. Okay? Street, uh, YouTubers, listen. You're going to cut the dinner prayers out tonight. Bang! And you're going to start pressing your way in, praying your guts out. Amen. You're going to go in and start asking for stuff God already told you you could have, and you're going to start getting it. Amen. Because it's already yours. Yes. Amen. You know what happens to that family right there if they don't cough up that ham sandwich? <laughs> CPS. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? You don't ever call CPS on your Heavenly Father. There's no need to. He's not an unjust judge. He's not just a friend that doesn't care next door. But there's method in his madness. He wants you to press your way in because it develops powerful spiritual strength in your spirit, man, allowing you to fight the devil under all and every circumstances. If he just casually answered your prayer, the devil would keep kicking your face in and dragging you down the streets and drawing and quartering you. He wants you to learn to fight back. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. So what does he do? He bears a little long with you sometimes with the answer. Come on, just a little further. The miracle's here. Don't stop there. It's right here. Keep another step. Come on. I did that with my daughters. Tracy, she's watching right now. I did that with her when she was a little... <clears throat> she was just starting to walk. So I had the couch and my chair here, see? And it's a short space. So I would prop her up here. It wasn't child abuse. <laughs> and I would get her started, and then she would teeter on and boop fall on the couch, you know, bang, on the couch. Then I'd go over again. Let me have your heart. Come on, let's go. Then I'd let her. Don't you, don't you understand? Oh, man. Father's got you going, and then he kind of lets you go. Okay. Okay, your miracle is right over there. A couple more steps to the couch. Oh, you fell on your face. No problem. Here, I'll help you up. Get up. I'll help you up. I'll get up. Get, okay, there you go. Come on, Tracy. Get there, take another one. Take it. The miracle is right there. Don't, oh, don't quit now. Oh, oh, you're sitting on your body. Here, sit up here. Self-pity, whining. Okay, stop it. Okay, done. Let's go forward again. This is the dumbest teaching I ever heard. It may be, but what I'm trying to illustrate is how Father sees you, what He's doing for you, leading you to total victory. The unjust judge 
Come on, Tracy, come on. Hurry up. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you fell down. Whatever. That's the unjust judge. Father says, I'm not like an unjust judge. What's he trying to get you to do there? Just keep going. Pressure way in. Push it a little closer. Just a little closer. Yes. You have no idea how many Christians miss their miracle. Just miss it like that. Just miss their healing right there. Peter, they miss it like that. They go all and quit. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> Eclectus, what does that mean? Church, it's usually translated as church in the Bible. It means those who are called are called out. And it was only used a few times in the Bible. Right here is the only places it was used. People that are called out by God were in those scriptures. Luke 18 again, I tell you that God will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when I come back, Jesus said, will I find Faith on the earth. You say, well, that sounds like a crazy question. It isn't. There's a massive antichrist spirit sweeping through the United States. They're trying to throw Christ out of everything and get their hands on. It's sweeping all over the world. You look at the book of Revelation, it's a miracle anybody makes it through there. And the question, when, at the second coming, that's a good question. Will there be anybody there who has any faith, who hasn't what? Fainted during prayer. Like I did at that pastor's house. <clears throat> so sleepy, I couldn't keep my eyes on him. For no reason. I had no idea it was demonic. <clears throat> he caught me. Now Jesus spoke this parable, Luke 18. And he spoke it to people who what? Trusted in themselves. American Christians the bless me generation. What's that mean? They were righteous. Trust they were right. Legalism. Legalism. Churches that are involved in legalism. You do this and this and that, and your standing with God improves tremendously. No. That's legalism. And people who don't do what we do, we despise them. What were those? Pharisees, Sadducees, and the like. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and one a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. I never knew it all those years, but my poor dad was just praying with himself for lunch. He'd say that same prayer, and it was, it was a rope thing. It would just come out. It would just spin out of there like it was nothing. And then he starts to point out the, the flaws in other people. Let me give you a quick tip here, particularly if you're married. <clears throat> a lot of you are married to a person who's a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> and they don't seem to be getting any better. Here's your problem. You're praying wrong. You're praying wrong. Don't pray like this. <clears throat> Lord, I'm here to pray for my wife. Oh, God. Oh, God, you know she's in deep trouble. God, you know she's a heathen. God, you know she's stupid. Oh, God, have mercy on her. That prayer is not being heard. Okay, well, that's a wasted prayer. Totally wasted. Don't go to God and run somebody down listing all their negative attributes. He already has a full list of everything. He doesn't need that information from you. That's how you pray for a spouse. God, please change him. Please change him, Lord. God, if you have to, take him. God. God, help. Dude. Dude. Those prayers are not going to work. They're not working. Stop it. Quit it. Cut it. Tip. You're praying with yourself. 
You're praying with yourself. Stop it. When you go to God in prayer, you don't sit there and tell him, look, I've done this before. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it. Lord, I've, I've been doing this and that, and working here and doing that and killing myself with this. Crickets. I, <laughs> nothing. Everything we have comes through grace and mercy. Yes. None of it's earned through my spectacular yes. Christian life. It is the envy of the world. That attitude is praying with yourself. You're just praying with yourself. I did that. I did that. I gave this. I donated that. I fixed that. I do Years ago, we were doing some, had a work day at the church. You ever heard of that? Church work day. Church work day is a, a day, on, usually on Saturday, where they announce it from the pulpit. We're having a ch church work day. And it's usually all kinds of stuff that you have to fix around the church that hadn't been fixed in years. They're finally getting around to it. And uh, the people that announce the church work day have been praying about it. And they kind of pray like this, Lord, please, please convict these people. God, find us a couple of dumb, <laughs> powerful back low IQ people to come help Saturday. <laughs> I volunteered. I was there Saturday. I showed up. And we worked all day and so on. And one, a couple of the guys weren't saved. They had come with a, uh, some friends from the church who were saved and they invited this other guy, hey, can you help us do that? We were fixing stuff, painting stuff, usual stuff. Landscaping, repairing, walls, holes, different things. <clears throat> At the end of the thing, the pastor, the pastor came out and he says, uh, thank you guys for, uh, for helping, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. And the, these, uh, one guy says, well, I'm, I'm not going to be here uh, tomorrow morning. He says, well, tomorrow's the Lord's day. And this other guy goes, well, the Lord got most of my day today. <laughs> That's what he tells the pastor. He's not saved. And he's a little agitated. Little, little, trying to get a little steamed. And uh, because I have discernment, I uh, stepped back. <laughs> and <laughs> wasn't sure where it was going to go. Because I knew the pastor had the anointing, and I assumed his guardian angel would take care of me. <laughs> well, this guy was kind of insulted. Tomorrow was the Lord's Day, but he, he... See, the guy's attitude was worldly, and he didn't understand that while I was working around the church there, running errands and doing gopher work. It wasn't a job to me. It was a privilege to do it. I was picking up some trash for the Lord. The reason I was doing that is I was trying to show the Lord that I would be willing to have a servant's heart. And I would be willing to do grunt work. And would you consider me for some kind of a ministry down the road? The other guy didn't have that attitude. He gave the good Lord a good chunk of his day, and the good Lord should have been happy with it. If he wasn't, well, that's his problem. <laughs> what was he doing there? He's the guy, the guy who prays with himself. See? Th these people are praying with themselves. Oh, I do all these things. I did that right. I did this right. You don't give me any credit for that. That's a big marriage counseling issue. Why do this and that and that and this? And they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate it. The public and standing afar off, guess what? He prays correctly. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. And he took to beat upon his breast. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Man, you wouldn't believe how many people don't get their prayers answered because they're frustrated or angry or have pride. Just cuts it right off. A broken heart gets a miracle fast. Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. The other one did not. That's incredible. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. The one guy went, all, went over all of his assets and why he should be justified and wasn't. The other guy went over none of his assets, begged for mercy, and went home justified.
And here's the killer. Everyone that exalts himself or herself shall be abased. In the natural world, it goes this way. It always goes the opposite in the spirit world. Yeah. Luke 18, they brought to him infants that, would, that he would touch them. A breathless is a nursing baby. That was the Greek word used to describe Jesus in the <coughs> food trough, the manger. He was a nursing infant baby, right? He says here, bring the babies. They brought babies to him. They wanted them to touch them. And who wouldn't? If you had a baby, you'd bring him to the Lord for him to touch him, wouldn't you? Gee, an heartbeat. <coughs> When the disciples saw it, see, they, they had already had their kids. Right? The, the most wonderful thing in the world is your kids. The most miserable thing is your neighbor's kids. <laughs> Nobody wants somebody else's kids. If you've already had kids, you kind of lose your feel for them. Have you noticed that? Right? <laughs> yeah. The best thing about kids is to be in my position, a grandfather. This is off the record. Grandkids are ten times better than regular kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got something to look forward to, folks. You got kids? Grandkids. Oh, you can't even believe it. You get all the loving and none of the agony. <laughs> It is so great. My grandkids think I'm great. My kids would sell me to gypsies. <laughs> Grandpa, how you doing? Hi, Dad. Grandkids are fantastic. They're so good. Look forward to it. Trust me on that one. These are babies, though, okay? The disciples didn't have babies anymore, and they'd lost their feel for them. If you're not around babies, you lose your feel for them. And they see them more as a nuisance. Babies are a nuisance. The people are out of baby, babyhood. And when they saw Jesus, they rebuked these people. That's the Greek word, epitomao, for rebuking demons. The disciples were rebuking these parents for bringing Babies to Christ, infants. Like I said, friend, you, nobody really has any friends. You only got one. Sticks closer to the brother. They don't even like mothers with babies. That's how these, how deeply spiritual these disciples are. Jesus called them and said, "Hey, allow the children to come to me." Now he switches gears. Notice the difference here? A Pideon is a youngster. That one. See that girl there? That girl right there has a free will. This one doesn't. He didn't say allow the... Because they can't. They can They have a free will. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Whoever will not receive the kingdom of God as a <clears throat> what's the problem with children? They become adults. <laughs> Jesus is saying spiritually, children are better than adults. Children have a genetic childlike faith, a gentle belief. Adults collate, think, process too much. Evaluate, judge, think it out too much. 
blocking their miracles. Children are more apt to get a miracle than, a, than an adult. The kid with the sack of lunch was the root of the miracle of feeding 5,000 one day. A kid with a sack of lunch. The adults all thought about it and realized it couldn't be done. And told him so. Dude, we got a kid with a sack of lunch here. What are you, nuts? Now, what good's that? We've only got some money here. We could go to the store, but my God, we can't even feed this first section. What were they doing? Not using their childlike face. They were processing like Christians. They think too much. You think too much, and you'll generate fear, and then you'll process it right out of your mind. Let me think about that. Hmm. See, miracles can't be thought out. That's why they call them miracles. Children, let them come in. Don't stop them. What was he saying there? You adults who can't maintain your faith and you fall asleep while you're asleep, while you're praying, you think too much. Stay out of the way and let the kids come in. Amen. Amen. All right, let's, let's close with this then, shall we? Proverbs 28. Some of you have been struggling for years wondering why you can't get your prayers answered. What's your problem? Thanks for asking. He that turns his ear away from hearing the law of God, his prayer becomes an abomination. Proverbs 28. Psalm 66. If I regard ra'ah, ra'ah, if I can see iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What a verse, what a shocking verse no one ever talks about. When you pray, if you know you've got crap in here and you're praying anyway, you've got bad problems. If you're ignorant of it and you don't know it, that's a horse of a different color. You know you got all this crap you haven't cleared out, but you're going in and praying anyway. Ooh, okay. No answer. Get it fixed. James 4. You ask, but you don't receive because you ask amiss. So you may consume it upon your hedonism. Hedoné. Several years ago, a guy comes to the altar. He's praying. He's crying. I go over to the guy. I says, uh, "What's? What do you need from the Lord?" He says, "I started a company and it's, it's collapsing." I said, "Why'd you start the company?" Oh, I wanted to support, build churches, and can't remember where it was. It was a mission field somewhere. I forgot, the, forgot where it was now. I wanted to build churches and so and so. And I'm thinking to myself, that boy, this, that's a, this guy's great. He's had a good heart for the Lord. And I started talking to him some more. Well, to shorten the story up, that wasn't the initial reason he started the company. You know, he wanted a nice house and a bunch of material things and great cars and this and that and that and this. And he wanted, he told the Lord if he just blessed his company, he'd start building churches and wherever it was. I can't remember the name of the company, country. You're going to go broke. No. 
What you're really thinking and really feeling, the Holy Ghost sees it clear as a bell. Even though you convinced yourself it was for a noble cause, there was a little stain in there. That guy's business went belly up. Happens all the time. You can't even imagine how many Christians filed bankruptcy. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe how many of them backslide after that. You know why? So they got a word from God. Got a word at church. Somebody gave him a word. The Lord told me that he's going to, you're on the rescue list, sister. God's going to come to you. The disaster you're facing. And they interpret it as, my God, we're going to, he's going to step in. He doesn't step in and boom, they go under. Why? You're asking improperly. First Peter chapter 3. Let's switch over to husbands. Uh, husbands, hey, you've got problems if you're giving it to the wife. Your prayers are not going to be answered. To mail means to give honor, place value upon as the weaker vessel. You are heirs together of the grace of life. Don't do that so your prayers are not hindered. Okay? <clears throat> if you're married to a wife and she is a certified card-carrying bird brain. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Here's a scenario. You got married years ago and you got saved later. She got married to you years ago. She got saved later. When you get born again in your spirit man, you become a new creation in Christ in the spirit man. You don't become a brand new person instantaneously. You look about the same. Yes. Oh, yes, you do. You smell about the same. The, the husband is the head of the household, spiritually, supposedly. And if you're hurting the wife and kids, the whole system is going to spiritually clunk on you. Ecopto means to cut down. That would be the term you would use if you're chopping a tree down. Yeah. So we've been over this before. It's better to let your crazy wife have some leniency, some patience, or whatever it is, you got to get through whatever little incident you got to get through. <laughs> There's a lot of incidents. <laughs> if you give them some patience, you know, give them some strength. You know. Spiritually, for you, it's going to end up so much better. Okay? You may have to give in a little bit on over here or lose something there or do something a little extra. I get that. Yeah, I'm doing that myself. <laughs> but... You can't afford on the other end to have a spiritual issue. Right? right? That's right. So my wife's in the office here and she doesn't listen to the teaching. <laughs> she, can't she can't hear me right now. But my wife, hey, she's a great person. She does stuff that... Uh, I, I, <laughs> 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 and... You know, I've just trained myself. I have. I literally trained myself. After I read that verse in particular years ago, I thought, ooh, this wife thing is serious. And it was more serious than I thought, as you can tell. I said, man, I gotta, I'm gonna have to, I gotta work on this. And so I started gradually, slowly working on letting stuff go, give in. Chill it, release it, take a little loss here, okay something there, you know. Because the, the last two weeks here, you, you can't even believe how many miraculous deliverances and healings we've had in this building in my counseling sessions. It has been one after the other. Kelly's been here helping me, John's been here. It's unreal. People are being healed in bang, 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 bang. I'm not going to jeopardize that 
for a problem with that. Who's not getting it? Raise your hand. Who doesn't understand what I said? And I treat my life, my wife, like a queen. Just last week, I was telling her that. Um, <laughs> as you can, t as you can tell, I. Top of the line. <laughs> and I've got a huge YouTube audience. Tens of thousands of people watch me, so i got to dress up and show up. It just has to be done. Last week, I, I got some short, bought some new shorts. They were very colorful. And my wife goes, hey, you know, yeah, I'd like to have a pair of those shorts. Oh, I went back to a very expensive store. It's aisle three. Uh... Sam's Club, and uh, <laughs> I get these shorts, you know, two of them, beautiful, they're gorgeous, oh man, like this knockout outfit, bring them home, show them to her, she runs into the bedroom, puts on her shorts, comes out, they don't fit, I don't want them. No problem. I never said one word. Took him back to Sam's. And put the discount rack money back on my credit card. And cool. Uh, man. <laughs> uh, sir, your wife is begging that to happen right now she's in the prayer room interceding don't no I'm making fun of but don't you see that scripture aren't you following it don't you get it yeah. see if you're as a husband not supposed to be the head of the home that's a different story but you are the man you are the dad you are the father you're the spiritual head of the home and it all flows down from there okay so you have to have your prayers answered for your business, for your finances, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your needs, for your desire, whatever it is you're praying for, you can't afford to lose your prayers. Okay. Too much. Uh oh, I went too far. The woman was supposed to have a submission before her husband. What's that? The woman was supposed to have a submission before her husband. Spoken like a true divorced man. Bless you, buddy. <laughs> Get her, bud. Thank you. That worked. I hear you. I know. I've been there. Trust me. Listen, man. Here's the deal. You trash your wife, and you're stabbing yourself in the back. I'm warning you. Okay. And I get the argument, guys. Don't, don't, don't try to convince me. I hear you. Yeah. They. They said that. That was stupid. They did that. You don't understand it. You didn't like that. They. Whatever it is, I get it. Humans, you know, yeah, we make mistakes. But he's a human. I got flaws like everybody else. I don't appear to, but I do. <laughs> but that's not the point. It's a spiritual issue. You know, hurting her, trashing her, you know. Listen, just give in a little bit. Let something go. You don't have to have everything your way. Right. Negotiate a deal. Relax. Chill. Negotiate, bend a little bit. Because you don't want to lose your miracle later. Yeah? Enough, enough of that said. Oh, what's the next healing? Well, uh, what's the next prayer blocker? This one's just, just as bad. You trashed your parents because they were rotten parents. Your parents, your adopted parents, your step parents. Yeah, I know. They were terrible. I get it. But things are not going to go well with you because you trashed them. You lied to them. You cheated them. You stabbed them in the back. You took revenge. You cussed them out when they weren't around. You yelled at them. Tonight you're going to repent of it so you can get your prayers answered. 
they're dead doesn't matter you can take it to the Lord and apologize to him for it and get that curse broke off of you yes. you cannot trash your parents and get away with it your life is not going to go well your health your finances your children everything's going to screw up it's the parental curse it doesn't matter if they were rotten people I know they were most people in America have dysfunctional families and rotten parents the majority of them have them I get it I understand your parents were sick they're nuts they're not saved they're this they're that I know they are doesn't matter we're talking about you this is between you and God not you and your parents we got to get this fixed we're gonna get it fixed tonight if you trashed your parents when you were young and they deserved it I know they did you brought a curse on your life your finances your relationships everything things have struggled you've been struggling for years things don't work out right things never go right you're up for a while then you crash you live like this you trashed your parents years ago okay we're gonna untrash them tonight Amen. you went behind their back you stole money from them you lied to them you're a drug addict you really trashed your parents when you were a drug addict you lied all the time and you were cursing yourself stabbing yourself in the back you destroyed your own life you can save your life tonight just repent of it when you pray do not be a hypocrites do not do what my dad did just say a prayer to be seen at lunch it doesn't work that way that's why Jesus went off alone see that disciples go pray alone they don't need to be seen by you or get your approval if they look spiritual they have the reward they got the public accolades <coughs> when you pray don't use vain repetitions blah, 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 blah. those don't work when you pray do not do what Merim nao. don't be anxious just before I walked out here I was praying with a woman in my office legal case coming up anxious fearful scared why everybody was letting her down anxiety will block your prayers when you pray with fear and anxiety by definition you don't believe when you're afraid and you pray you can't get your prayer answered because you're inherently doubting Lord please <laughs> no it's not working because he hears what you're really saying Fearful prayers do not work. What's the best way to get your prayers answered? Add thanksgiving. Okay? I learned that from that verse. Whenever I do my private prayer in quiet, what do I do? I start out with my <coughs> thank you list. Yes. I go down my thank you list. Yes. One of the things I thank him for, this building you bought. Thanks for the building. I'm not an ingrate. I don't care whether you don't care. I thank you for that build. This building you bought this building for. I thank God for all these people who got healed last week. I went down the list. Click, 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 click. I read it there. They tell me it works. James chapter 1 you have to pray in faith if you add three words you lose your prayer what is that if it be thy will if you add those words to your prayer when God already said you could have it that's not I tell that's doubt doubting prayers don't work Question. When you're praying, if you pray scripture, is that correct? So in other words, if you are asking and you back it up with scripture. Sounds great. Okay. 
What's wrong with that? Oh, yeah, she said, can you pray scripture? Well, sure, absolutely, beautiful. But you have to pray it in faith. Now, again, it's not vain repetition scripture. Blah, 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 blah. That's not going to work. Yeah, that's just that's power of positive thinking stuff. That that stuff doesn't work. That's Catholicism. Yeah. <laughs> and so, see, you have to ask in faith. Nothing, no, nothing wavering. What does diacrino mean? It means to not be able to decide between a couple of options. See, Burger King, Taco Bell. <laughs> Burger King. Where do you want to eat? I, want, I don't. My wife's in the office. She can't hear me, but. <clears throat> When she was little, her mother spoiled her and her brother because she tried for years to have children and couldn't. Finally had these two kids. So she would take the kids out to eat. And she would ask the brother, what do you want to eat? I want to eat over here. And she'd ask my wife, where do you want to eat? I want to eat over there. So the mother then would taxi or cart around to different, whatever they chose. We go here, we go there. I was raised completely different. <laughs> My parents were drunk and there wasn't any food in the house. <laughs> you would scrounge for food. And there wasn't any order and stuff. See, white trash people wouldn't do that. If it's edible, it sh goes in here. Huh? You shove it in. And you, you don't worry about it later. <laughs> See, what the Bible says is if you're going to ask for something, knowing it's already yours and God already promised, promised it to you, there's no wavering. There's no deal. You're not vacillating between, is this good or that good? Shall I choose that? What about this? What, what do I want to eat? Sub, sandwich, fish, what do we want? I'm not sure. I can't decide. Prayer wiped out. Prayer wiped out. How do I know that? It says it right there. Do not think you will get anything from God. Lord, will you heal? Are you sure you do you heal today? Are you just healing for today? Uh, no healing. Just before the service started, I'm praying in my office. I'm saying to this lady, listen, Father's going to come through tomorrow. It's going to happen. But you must release it to him and repent of this anxiety and fear. Will you do it? In Christianity, people just pray for stuff, but they don't find the roots of it. If, that had been a, if this had been a church and I'd been a pastor, I would have just prayed for them. Lord, we put this thing in your hand and bless, bless, bless. That prayer wouldn't have worked. I had to get her to see the root of it, which was anxiety in prayer. The Spirit of God touched her and she started giggling. It was done. He'll take care of that thing. No court or judge can overrun the Holy Ghost. That can't happen. That's impossible. I mean, he, just speak it like, he just speaks it or whatever he does. I don't even know what he does. But whatever it is, it's nothing and boom, it happens. That's how that works. If you repent, your prayers are guaranteed by God. Did you know that? <clears throat> Seeing then that we have a great high priest passing the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. What does criteo mean? That's like you grip a baseball bat. Yeah. If you're not using criteo, what happens to the bat? It goes into the stands. Then there's a lawsuit. <laughs> then you got to autograph the balls. <laughs> and do what? Homologia. Keep speaking it out. Okay. You don't speak it out if you're not holding it. Don't, oh, I dropped it again. Pick it up. Oh, jeez. Pick the... Why? People are going to think you're a spiritual jerk. You look like an idiot. One day you're speaking faith. The next day you're wavering. 
the people hearing you are losing faith in God. Don't you know a Christian like that? Oh, God's going to... The next day, uh, well, I don't know. Jeez, this didn't happen. Uh, what are they doing? One minute they're swinging away, and the next minute they're dropping the bat. If you drop the bat, don't say anything. You're going to hurt somebody else. Only speak it out if you have held fast. That's Cretail. It's a tug of war, folks. <laughs> Who's on the other end of that rope? The, the devil. He's trying to keep you from getting your prayers answered and he's using the techniques I've spoken about tonight. Why can you get your prayers answered without question? You have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our weaknesses. Sympathico, what is that? He has sympathy for you. Why? He used to be you. Angels don't have any sympathy for you. Why? They never were you. An angel's always been an angel. Christ became us. And he understands. Asthenia, I got weaknesses. Lots of them. All humans have them. <coughs> He understands us and he has sympathy for what we're going through. It says it right there. He was periazzo, tested in everything we are tempted and tested in. Yet he was Coris, unlike us, separate from sin. <coughs> In light of all that in this Bible study, let us therefore do what? Yes, not the Parisio. There it is. Just walk in like you own the place. It's the same as T-ball. Yeah. My oldest daughter, Tara, was in T-ball. You ever heard of that? You put the ball on the tee, then you hit it. Where have you been? What country are you from? You're from Sweden? She's from Australia. Here in America, we have T-ball. What happens is you put the tee... You put the ball there. The kid walks up. They miss it a few times. Punk. They hit it really hard. It rolls right there. They take, they take off running like Carl Lewis. And the parents, who are semi-brain dead, we're in the stands cheering like we're watching the World Series. <laughs> Greatest thing we ever saw. I was, couldn't have been happier. Bang. Brr, oh, my God. It was like I hit the lottery. My daughter got a hit. Look at it dribbling over there. Oh. <laughs> Father sees you the same way. Amen. When you crawl in on your knees, whining and whining, oh, my God, this life sucks. <laughs> Father's backing off. There's no faith there. There's anxiety. There's fear there. No prayers getting answered there. Right. You walk in like you own the place. Hey! Thank you, Lord. You told me all the promises of God are Christ or yea and amen. They're mine. I want that. I want that. I want that. Father goes, look at, look at Mike hit that T-ball. Look at him. Look at Mike. Boom. There we go. Look at him. Holy Ghost is standing. Go, go, Mike. Run. 
Run like run. Don't you get it? Don't you see it? Your crappy little Mickey Mouse gutless useless prayers need to go right straight to hell. You need to stand up and fight like you own the place. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word on prayer. The teaching tonight on prayer is fantastic, Lord. You're the greatest teacher. The great one. No question. Tonight, Lord, there are several people sitting here, at least seven or eight, that can't get their prayers answered. They've been praying over something for a long period of time. It hasn't come through. They've been praying over several things for a long period of time. That has not come through. And the reason those prayers are not getting answered, one of those reasons was what we went over tonight. You, you outlined it here. You mentioned it here. And somebody, somebody needs their prayers answered. And whoever that person is, I want them set free tonight. I want them loosed tonight. I want their prayers answered. I want all their prayers answered. There's people here tonight who have been praying weak, cowardly, useless prayers. There's people here tonight who have been praying with anxiety and doubt in their prayers. They are going to repent tonight and change. They are going to start seeing true miracles happen in their life. They're going to start seeing all their prayers answered. There's parents here tonight who see their children falling apart and they've been praying and praying for them and nothing's happening. Their prayers are being blocked. Their prayers are being blocked. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. And tonight, we're going to confess that and get rid of it. And every person at this altar call is going to get their prayers answered. They're going to change. They're going to repent. There's people here tonight that were hard on their parents years ago and they had a good reason to be. Their parents were terrible. But that curse still fell on them anyway. Their parents are gone now. It's not about the parents anymore. It's about us. It's about us. There's some hus husbands here who are frustrated with their wives. They've, they've said things and done things they shouldn't have done. They should have been more patient. Should have been more giving. Should have been relaxed. Should have chilled it out. Tonight, that husband is going to repent right here right now and apologize and just apologize to her that's what he's going to do and when they apologize that's going to be like putting an ice pick right in the devil's eye he's going to have to take that there's nothing he can do about it something's blocking your prayers let me tell you something it could be a family curse. We didn't go over it, but if you've got a strange illness, a disease, a weird series of negative events in your family, those are curses that come down through the family tree. Something's wrong there. Something needs to be broken. Something needs to be repented of. Something needs to happen. And why not have it happen here tonight? Why not do that? Why not do that? Father, I pray right now for every person on YouTube, every person, just stand in front of your computer, Stand right there, and we're going to pray for you in a minute. And God's going to break this bondage off you so you can get your prayers answered. That you have got to repent of it. You have got to surrender it. You've got to confess it. You've got to stand up and stop praying prayers of unbelief and doubt. And stop asking amiss. And stop asking with anxiety and fear. Those prayers will never be answered. Father, I'm asking, I know you will do it. I know you'll do it. Because I know you want to. You're not an unjust judge. You're a, you're a good judge. God's a good God. God is love. You're not like an unjust judge. You're not like a friend next door who won't help us when they're supposed to be our friends. You're not like that. How much more will you answer our prayers? How much more will you send us the Holy Ghost? So much more. And I believe that in the name of Jesus. I believe you're going to do it. I trust you to do it. Thank you for all the people you've delivered this week, Lord. It was fantastic. Last week, incredible. But that's not good enough. That's past now. This is what counts. This is the only thing that counts now, Lord. This is it. 
What's past is past. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you've got something blocking your prayers, just come right down here. I want to talk to you. Come on down here. You know there's something blocking your prayers. You're dismissed if you need to go. The bookstore is right, in the, right out in the hall there. God bless you. Don't forget about the donation boxes on the doors there. Thank you for your donations. If you need prayer tonight, something's blocking your prayers, particularly if it's a long-term pattern, long-term pattern of blocking your prayers. Come down here in the front here. I want to talk to you for a minute. <clears throat> You got a long-term problem or you may have one issue in your life you just can't get rid of it driving you crazy something's blocking your prayers come down here so we can get this thing broke tonight broke off of you to Jesus if you need to leave you're dismissed youtubers please don't turn that computer off now I'm gonna pray for you in just a minute okay please stay with me You got a curse on your family and you know it's there you see the pattern curses are normally patterns similar patterns you see the same thing in the family hitting other family members it's usually a curse all right come down here and sit in the front here i know and talk to you husbands your wife's driving you nuts and you've inappropriately reacted to it instead of properly managing it Managing it with faith and patience and the spirit. I know. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It can be done, though. It can be done. Your prayers are being blocked. Something blocking your prayers. Come on down here in the front row. All right. Is any of my ministry team going to come down? You can come down now and stand with me back here. Thank you, Jesus. Husbands, you got a husband, you've been trashing your wife, fighting, arguing, yelling, and fussing. Uh, that's, a, that's an ugly scene. I don't mean between you two, I mean in the spirit world. That is so destructive. Incredibly destructive. That lets in demons so fast you wouldn't even believe it. You trashed your parents when you were young. They molested you, beat you, abandoned you sold you, whatever they did to you, is 100% wrong, and I know that. God knows that. But that curse is on you. we got to get that thing broke off. Break it off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? All done? Okay. Okay, now, come stand right here if you have a trashed your parents. You've got a parent curse on you. Your parents abused you or something and trashed you out. Stand right here, over by me right here. Your parents, parent curse. We'll do the most important one first. Stand right here. Your parents. Your parent. You trashed your parents. You cursed them. You ripped them to shreds when they weren't, weren't around. And for good reason. They did a lot of bad things. I'm not saying they didn't. This isn't parent justification night. That's not going to happen here. I'm not going to justify anybody's parents' bad behavior. That's crazy. I'm not about to do it. All right. What did your parents do? Uh, drug abuse. Drug abuse? What did your parents do to you? Uh, she was going to What did she do to you? What did she do to you? Emotional abuse? Yeah. Your parent, she mother was mentally ill? She's ill. Mentally ill for this reason. Okay. What was the diagnosis for your mother? This is Hong Kong. What's that? Is it a mental disorder? Hong Kong? What did your mom do? What did your mom do? Spiritual abuse, what did she do to you? Was it verbal abuse? Yeah. Both of them? What about your parents? Um, verbal 
verbal and physical. Abandonment. <coughs> Abandonment. Your parents. Both parents or one? My parents divorced and my father left when Little? Grade school? Three years old. Three, okay. Mm -hmm. What did your parents do? They left you? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Okay, we got drug abuse, verbal abuse, abandonment, divorce. You got parents that walked out on their kids, left them. We got a couple of parents here who were mentally ill. That causes an incredible series of problems. All right. All right, let's start praying here. Just follow my lead. Take a big breath. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Relax. And just relax the body there. There you go. Just relax your body. Good. Take a big breath. Relax. Thank you, Jesus. Just relax. There you go. Good. Relax your body. Take a big breath and relax your body. Good girl. Relax. There we go. Good. Relax, dear. Good. Just relax right now. Good. Just relax. Just relax. Just relax. Relax. Just relax. Take a breath. Relax. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Now just pray, breathe. Just pray along with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I committed a horrible sin when I was young and I did not even know it. I dishonored my mother and father. I broke the laws of God and I broke your heart, Lord. I dishonored my mother and my father and a curse fell upon me. A curse fell upon me. When I was young, I swore I would never grow up like my parents. And when I got older, I found myself acting like them and thinking like them. And now I see what it was. I brought that curse on myself. Father God, I am so incredibly sorry, Lord. I'm sorry I did that. I'm asking you to forgive me for what I've done to my mom and dad. They had evil spirits. The spirits were using my parents to get to me. And I didn't know it when I was young. I didn't see it. Father, help me. I'm so sorry for what I've done. I want this ugly curse and this fear right there broken off of me. I want this fear removed from me. I want these witchcraft curses from my parents broke off me. I want this sin and this curse just snap, snap like that, broken off of me. Break off of me right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Just break, break off of me. Break off of me now in Jesus' holy name. Mom, I release you right now. I, Dad, I let you go from my soul. I release you from my soul right now and I let you go. I repent of this wickedness. Thus saith the Lord. Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. And things have not gone well with me. My life has been in turmoil, chronic failure, financial failures, relationships broken, sicknesses in the family, diseases in my body, emotional pains, illnesses. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of now, come on, you're not praying very hard tonight. Come on, let's go. We just went through a teaching on praying with aggression. Come on now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for what I've done. I hurt my parents. I cursed them. I cursed them. I didn't know it boomerang. It boomeranged on me. The curse fell on me. The curse fell on me. Now I'm an addict. Now I'm I'm mentally ill. Now I'm sick. Now my finances are busted. Now I'm divorced, just like everybody else. My God, I felt like leaving my kids too. The curse fell on me, Lord. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of my body right now in the name of the Lord. 
Come on now. Come on. Just let your tears go. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Don't look at the person next to you. Don't look around. Don't get distracted. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Dishonoring your parents is a hideous curse. A hideous curse. It will destroy your life. You'll be ruined forever. You'll be in 50 business deals. They'll all fail on you because you cursed your parents when you were young. You'll go to a thousand doctors and you'll never get healed. You cursed your parents when you were young and you can't get healed. Come on, let's go. You can't have one good relationship. They all fail. They all fall apart. You cursed your parents. Just repent of it. Just confess it. Just confess it quickly. Just confess it quickly. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. Are your parents dead? Just apologize to the Lord. Tell him you're sorry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am so sorry for what I've done. So sorry for what I did. I hurt my mom and dad. I should have never did it. I didn't understand what I was doing. I was too young. I reacted emotionally. I reacted with negative emotions. I said something I shouldn't have said. Forgive me, dear God. God, I'm so sorry. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Now, if you've got a wife curse on you, you've got a husband, you've been trashing your wife, you come down here and stand with me right here. Our ministry team is going to pray for these other people. Come to stand right here. You've been trashing your wife. Husband, come here. It's an ex-wife. You trash an ex-wife. Doesn't matter. You're still cursed. Come down here. Husband, you're trashing your wife. Get down here quickly. We got to get that curse broke off of you. Come on. Husband, husband, honor your, honor your wife. Come on. So your prayers are not hindered. Right here. Right here. You husband, what would you do to her? You still married? Right now? Why are you doing that? What's it about her that drives you nuts? Just like, you know, always thinking she should be a certain way, act a certain way, you know, uh, perform a certain way. Uh, and she doesn't? Huh? She doesn't? Uh, she doesn't sometimes, then, you know, I give her a chance sometimes, and then I have it, like, way too much. And then, uh, do you have some prayers that need to be answered? Well, I got a lot of prayers that need to be answered. You do? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's what the problem with this guy is. Uh, he... He holds his wife to a standard that God does not hold to him. In other words, God gives him nothing but grace. He should be dead now. But he doesn't He doesn't give it to her. And Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. He, he cheats. He doesn't mean to cheat. Secondly, he's got a behavior pattern of that. It's now started out as a sinful thing, and then it developed into a, like a habit. Now, now she just says that and click, he's in like an instantaneous re response. Correct? Oh, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not on right there. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, secondly, uh, close your eyes, sir. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. Oh, good. Thanks for coming down here. Close your eyes. Hey, th this guy needs. Uh, Godly sorrow first, first off, before the other part. He doesn't have it, okay? So we're going to pray for that first right now. Father, I'm asking you to touch this man of God right now with godly sorrow so he can see in the spirit world and see that he is destroying his own life and the devil's using his wife to destroy him. You gave him love unconditional. You gave him grace. You accepted his flaws. You loved him with his flaws, with his sins, with his failures, with his trespasses. But he doesn't give that grace to her. And now it's become a horrible, satanic behavior pattern. And I'm asking you to give him his tears back and godly sorrow for what he's done to her now. In Jesus' name, he's going to repent now. In tears. Repent in tears. In Jesus' mighty name. What's going on here? What's going on here? What you down here for? I, I, I've been disrespectful to her. Why? And I've been 
trying to force her to just force her to what? Just I, I to I've been judging her that she's not spiritual enough and I'm just being real mean to her. Oh, okay. You got prayers you need answered? That's the Holy Ghost touching you right now. Oh, just repent of it. Repent of it. No more judging her. No more hurting her. Satan, lose your hold of this man of God right now. Lose your hold of this man of God. Lose your hold of this man of God right now. I repent of it. I hurt her. I hurt my wife. You speak English? Okay, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Just repent of it, sir. Right now. Repent of it. Just repent of it right now. Tell him you're sorry. Lord Jesus, I forgive my husband for being hard on me. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to forgive me. He, the devil's using him to hurt me. And I'm going to release my husband's pain and his wounds right now. Let go. Come out now. There it is. It's coming out now. There it comes. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Here it comes. There it comes. Come out, devils. Come out, devil. Hold that. Come out, Satan. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Come out now. Go. Satan, lose your hold. Right now. Come out now. Husband abuse. Come out of her. Demons from her husband. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Pornography. I bind your power. Go. Come out of body right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Lust. I bind your power. Lust. Come out of body right now. Come out. Every demon from her husband. Come out now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Come out. All of her husband's demons come out right now. Every criticism. Every judgment. Every judgment. There it comes. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. Say the loose your hold. Come out now. Get out of body right now. Come out of her. Come out. Come out right now. Husband demons. Husband demons. Come out. Criticism, verbal abuse, negativity. Come out, block prayers. Block prayers. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Out. Go. Come out of there right now. You wife hater, come out. Wife hater, arrogance and pride. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Stop hurting her, Satan. You rotten demon, stop using him in order. Come out right now. White hater demon, come out. Go. What you need, hon? I'm, I'm repenting of if I ever did anything wrong to my mom and dad. You don't know? I always treated them with respect. Okay, what's, they, the, what's the next issue? And the, and the next one is... Uh, my ex-husband, I was, uh, my ex-husband, I was trashing, oh, I was trashing him. You've got to break through with both, okay? With the Freemasonry, you've got to break through. You've got to break through. What is it? Come on. I was trashing my ex-husband, and, and I repented him. Go! Your ex husband, what? I was trash. You trashed him? I was, uh, I repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. What? And I repent of it. I repent of trashing him. All the things I said about him. You did? What's yeah. his name? His name is, uh, Pat Sidney. Pat? 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 Okay, close your eyes. Take a big breath. Pat, all your abuse spirits and all your lie spirits and all your woman hating spirits, you come out of that body tonight and leave your wife for the rest of her life. You come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Say it. Come out right now. All of his spirits, come out. All of his spirits, come out. Good girl. All of his spirits, come out. Come out. 
Come out faster. Come out faster. Thank you, Jesus. Save me, Lord. I love you. Save my soul. Save my life. I love you. Help me. Come out. No, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go now. Add a girl. You speak in tongues? Yes. Go. Try Go. Oh, excellent. That's good. Louder. Thank you, Jesus. We all love you. Say it. Get out of there. Malo, come out. Twitter. 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 Come out right here. Here he comes. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Get out of my body right now. Come out of here right now. I can't believe what I said to her. That was evil. The demons were telling me to do it. I can't rebind their power. Get out wife, hate her, demon. Come out of my head right now. Out now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Go. Go now. Come out of that body right this second. Come out. There he is. Come out quicker. Mother. Mother, come out. Mother. Every demon from my mother hiding my legs comes out tonight. Come out, Mom. Come out, Mama. Get out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of my stomach. Every ugly man that ever touched my body leaves tonight. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my womb. Come out of my womb, I say. Come out of my spine. Right now. Come out. Right now. Every horrible abuse, every curse word, everything you heaped on me, I release it tonight. I'm releasing it tonight. Satan, come out now. Satan, come out now. Satan, come out now. I want the harshness for his glory to go. I want those triggers, that, that Jezebel spirit that was in my mother, and all the different women who have hurt me over and over. There's those things that come out, Lori, and I'm harsh, and I want it to stop so my prayers aren't hindered. I, I really want it to stop, but I'm like, I repent, but I, I need whatever is in there to go so I don't react, you know? React. Yeah. Yeah. i got to stop it. Yeah. I hear you. Father God, Father God, I need a miracle here. The demons are stealing his prayers. His wife's driving him nuts. Come up and out. Come up and out. Every evil spirit, every abusive woman who has disappointed him is bound tonight. Bound in the name of Jesus. And it comes out now. Disappointment and sorrow and misery. Come out. Come out right now. Letting it all go. 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 Why will you help this guy? Yeah, John, yeah. He's, right to the arm. He's repenting over his wife. What's going on? I got a voice in the same so I have um, resentment, anger, rebellion, um, all issues like lust, just pornography, and all that that still haunts me. So all those things are still holding me. As well as I think it's family curse on us. Of all that, my dad, my brother, myself, and my sister got divorced. When you were little, did you have issues with your dad? Um, I did ask my mom why he, why she married him, that type of thing. So yeah, in that sense, yes. Why didn't you like him? Oh, we were abused. Um, but I did. I really. No, physically abused and and verbal. But that was his name, Leon. My first name was Leon. 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 Go. Come out of okay. Let's try that. How old were you when the beating started? Again? How old were you when the beating started? Fire. Fire. Yeah. Okay. Now, just close your eyes and take a big breath and relax. Relax. Anger. Come out. Father God, I want you to go back. Come out. Bondage. Come out. 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 Come
Come out, bondage. Come out, bondage. Go. Go. He instilled fear Go. in his boy. Go in Jesus' name. All the way. All the way. And your patience. His dad left demons in the home. Some of them were lust demons. And they got in the kids. He was abusing a child. I'm asking to go back right now and lift the neon out of him. He does not need a dad anymore. He has a heavenly father. Leon, you come out of your son right this second. You lift out of him. Every time you hit him, every time you yell at him, every time you yell at his mother, every time he lost his temper, Leon, in Jesus' name, come out of your childhood now. Leave your son now. We are, we are giving you up to the Lord. We're turning you over. We're releasing you. We're releasing you. No more Leon. Dad, I love you, but I have to let you go now. I've lived with you all these years, and now you have to go. I picked up qualities from my earthly father, and I need my heavenly father and his qualities, the fruit of the spirit. Sound mind, love, and power. Sound mind, love, and power. My dad betrayed me when he abused me. I betrayed my wife when I cheated on I treat you not fire. I married my dad. The marriage failed. Dad, leave me now. Leave me now. Let me go. All right, take a breath and blow. Good. Again, come out, Dad. Leon, come out. Leon, Leon, come out of there. Leon, I let my dad go. I let my ex-wife go. They had the same demons. I was disappointed with my dad. I was disappointed with my wife. Same demons. I'm going to let them both go. Both go now. I release them both now. For the rest of my life, I let them go. This lust spirit hiding down there I got from my dad. I want you out of my body in Jesus' holy name. Stop putting images in my mind of naked women. Stop putting lust thoughts in my mind. Stop pushing me to porn. Stop doing that right now and come out. Come out of me. Come out of me. I want my dad. I want my ex-wife. I want this lust spirit gone for the rest of my life. I do not take after my dad. I take after my heavenly father. Now go. Go. And go. Go. Come out of my stomach right now. Spirit of lost you good out of my body. Right now, I hate your guts. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Father God, give me the gift of hate right now. Hate for lust. Hate. I hate you. I hate you. I hate lust. I hate you. I hate you, I said. I've changed my mind. I hate your guts. I command these demons to stop running me around like a dog chasing his tail. Wasting money, wasting time, wasting years. I command you, curse, break off of me. Go now. Right now, break. There he is. Stop jumping and come out. 
Stop jumping in my body and come out of there. I want you out right now. Come out. Spirit of lust, I bind your power. I want you out. I'm sick of it. I hate you. I'm not putting things ahead of the Lord anymore. Nothing. Nothing goes ahead of the Lord. I'm repenting of it right now. I've changed my mind. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. I've been managing my own life. It's not going well. I quit. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. I'm not wasting another decade. No way. Come out. Come out of me, I said. Come out of there. Right there. There he is. Come out. That's him jumping. Get him out of there. Spirit of fear and lust. Go. Right there. There he is. Come out of his stomach. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of my body. Come out, I said. Right now. I'm not wasting any more years. No more money. No more nothing. Devil, you've had it. It's over. I hate you. I hate sin. I hate you. I hate you. You cannot serve two masters. You're going to hate one of them. I hate you now. I'm going to fight back right now. There he is. Get him out of there. That's him jumping. Leon, you come out of your son right now. Go. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come on out. I want my ex-wife Jezebel spirits out of there. Controlling, dominating, vicious. Jezebel, come out of me now. I want any demon I picked up from committing adultery that transferred into my body. I want them out tonight. Adultery, come out, I said. Come out. Wickedness and sin, come out. I'm not going to miss the rapture and I'm not going to hell. Now stop it. Come out of me. Come out of me. Right now. Come out of my body right in a second. Come out now. Stop jumping in there and come out. Stop jumping and come out. Right now. Come out. Hey, what's wrong with this boy? What's wrong with him? He's deaf and he can't talk. Can't talk? Hey, no. Turn over here. Hey. Yeah. I command you in Jesus Christ, I bind you, Spirit. I bind you, Spirit. Mock you, Spirit. I bind you. I command you in the name of the Son of the Living God. I curse you to failure. I curse you to fail. I curse you to fail. Come out of his boy right now. Come out of his boy right now. I curse you to fail. Come out of his body right this second. I place a curse of failure on you, the rotten demon of disability, spirit of infirmity, you witchcraft, sorcery, monster. I curse you in Jesus' name. I the authority of the Lord of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. I bind your power of the blood that Jesus shed. I command you to come off this boy and let this boy go. Come off this boy and let this boy go. You deaf and dumb spirit. You come out of that body right now. Direction from out. Direction from out. Come on. Come out right now. Get out. Open up. Open up. Open up. 
Come out. 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 generations, ten generations of witchcraft and sorcery. Go. Go. Go now. Go now. Here. How, how can I check his hearing? How can I tell if he can hear? How do I check it? Is, are you related to him? How can I tell if he can hear? What's that? Is that your son? This my son. How can I tell if you can hear now? How do I check it? Oh, um, how can I check it? See if you can hear. Well, he does, heal, he's, heal. He's, he's deaf, so. so yeah. I'm, how? How could it? Has he ever heard a sound? No. Why is he deaf? He ha he had a virus when he was born. A virus? Yes, a CMV virus. Okay. <laughs> Before, before he was born, my wife Sabrina was with uh, was married before to a man who was into Satanism, and he and he murdered her first child. And then when Sabrina and I got together, we we had him. She could we could see before before we were married. Who's that guy's name? This is Demetrius, the murderer. The guy who murdered uh, Tony. 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 Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we break off every murderous curse, every witchcraft and sorcery curse from Tony. Tony, all your demons, all your spirits, we bind your power. Tony, you murderer. We forgive you and we release you from this boy. The spirit of murder, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of sorcery. 
We release you from this boy. Tony, come out. Tony, come out. Tony, come out. Tony, come out. Heal. Heal. What's his name? Demetrius. Does he know his name? No. Demetrius. Demetrius. Sparrow, what's your name? What's your name? Tell me. Devin, tell me, Sparrow, what's your name? What's your name? Tell me. What's the name? I'm telling you to tell me your name. Can he communicate at all? I'm sorry. Does he have any communication skills? No. Nothing at all. He's not. He has nothing. He doesn't, no, he doesn't. He has a lot of autistic traits, so he doesn't. He doesn't speak. He, do, he doesn't hear. So he, he, and he doesn't sign really. He just knows a few. You know, like a few signs, but not very many. Is he in school? Yes. Is he able to learn anything? Is he able to learn anything? What? Learning anything? Can he learn anything? Um, no. Like he just. How old is he? He's twenty. He's gonna twenty-one. Right? What's the name again? He's uh he still goes to school, but you know, he doesn't really learn anything. He just does therapies and what's the diagnosis? Uh CMB virus. CMB cytomegalovirus is what it was called. What, what's his name again? I'm sorry? What's his name? His name is Demetrius. Thank you. Now you pray harder, right? You pray harder. You are going to fight tonight. You know why? You have a bright future. You've got a good heart. You're a good woman of God. I want every ugly man and every painful word they ever trashed you out with to leave now. All of it. All that vulgarity. Go. Come on. Keep fighting, keep fighting. All that vulgarity, all that anger, taking offenses and getting mad and hurt and wounded, that's over with. Come out right now. It's over with. It's over with. It's over with. It's over with. Get up. Streamers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit the uh, host deliverance button, and then hit the self deliverance button. You did not get all the demons out tonight. You hit the self deliverance button. You have to put your hand on your body. Mark chapter 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Put your hand on your body, streamer, right now and use authority aggressively. You got to be nasty. You got to be strong. Use your authority. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I bind your power, Satan. I bind your power, you spirit of infirmity. Come out of my knees. Come out of my back. I command you to come out now. You got to use your authority. You got to take, take your authority and fight now. 
I think the, the biggest thing with me, what I've just realized now, was forgiving myself. Because I've forgiven my dad, I've forgiven my wife, ex wife. But I haven't forgiven myself. All the shame, all the doubt, all the anger, the rage, the everything in between. And that's the thing I've ever done. Oh, that's the worst sin of all. Because since that blocks all your blessings, because God doesn't see you that way. He likes you. And you don't like yourself. That hurts you. Since I've repented about that, I start yawning. I couldn't even go to my family. I'm not even tired. Did you forgive yourself? I forgave myself. You did? So I just kept on saying I forgive, I forgive, and I thought, yeah, okay, I forgave, I forgave my wife. And then just suddenly I said, myself. And then I started yawning. I started yawning. They were coming out. And then I started yawning. Yeah, that was it. You didn't forgive yourself. That's why. Well done. That was the root of it. Yeah, you saw yourself as a failure and you had regrets. I saw myself as a failure. Yeah, and then you had regrets. Yeah, regrets. It's all in there. Thank you, Lord. Hey, streamers, listen, some guy just walked up to me and told me he forgave himself. That's the most important thing. You've got to forgive yourself. You cannot blame yourself. If you keep blaming yourself, things are going to go bad. My lips yes. are shaking. They're all good. They're coming out right now. Go. Come out. Come out of her. Come out. Come on, them legs. Come out of there. Come out of them legs. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of there and go. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a demon grabbing. They grab and pin pinch like that. Did yeah. you feel that? Go. Come out of there and go. Get out of my heart. Go. I've been hard hearted towards some people and toward myself and my kids have hurt my heart I repent of it now come out of me now hurry up streamers if you can't forgive yourself you'll never get healed if you don't forgive yourself you'll never get healed you have to forgive yourself okay, let's do it father in the name of Jesus I repent I repent over being hard on myself hurting myself criticizing myself having regrets having regrets I repent of it I repent of it right now I repent over it in Jesus name I repent over hating myself criticizing myself being hard on myself no more no more no more put your hand in your heart and your stomach there I release the self-condemnation, self-criticism, regrets, self-hatred. I, re I release dysmorphia, hating my body, looking at my body going, oh God, oh that's ugly. I repent of it, hating my face. I repent of jealousy and envy of others. Jealousy is a cancer. Jealousy causes cancer. Just repent of it right now. Let's go. You're going to repent of it right now. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I repent. The wounds from my kids. Come out of my heart right now. Come out. All these kids that hurt me. All these kids that abandoned me. All these kids that betrayed me. In Jesus' mighty name. I command you, Satan, to go. I said, I mean it. Listen, the devil knows if you don't mean it. If you try to get the devil out and you don't mean it, he'll laugh at you. He'll laugh at you. And you don't care, or you're too busy, or you're too preoccupied. Hey, dude, you're in trouble. 
You're in trouble. Friday nights, Brother Mike, 7 p.m. Pacific Time on YouTube here at the Deliverance Center. Thursday night, the preachers show up. The preachers will be here Thursday night, the Faith Healers, 7 o'clock, live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Time right here, the Arizona Deliverance Center. The next seminar, The Spirit World, Part 3, the last Friday of the month. You need to be healed and delivered. You've got to be at that seminar. You've got to be at that seminar. You must use your authority and fight back. You must learn to fight back. Praying doesn't work. Stop praying. Stop praying. You prayed before. You prayed before. Then you fight. Praying doesn't work. You, you pray before. Then you fight. In the name of Jesus. Friday night, 7 o'clock. YouTube. See you then.